What's your primary goal in life? Well, no matter what else you're trying to do, ultimately, you're trying to survive. And you're not alone in your quest. This primary urge to survive is shared by everyone around you. And every animal, and every tree, and insect, and every living thing. The purpose to survive motivates all the decisions, activities, and behaviors of every form of life. But you're not trying to just avoid pain and death. You want to live long and live well. You're seeking a high level of existence, a life full of pleasure and accomplishment, with an abundance of all the things you need to survive. How well are you surviving? And how can you improve the quality of your life? Well, the answers to those questions can actually be found on this graph. Here, your urge to survive would be an arrow that thrusts away from pain and toward pleasure. We call this thrust the survival dynamic. Your potential to survive can be found to fall somewhere on this graph, which is divided into zones. These zones also form a scale of emotional tones. The higher the zone, the better your potential to survive and the happier you'll be. For example, when you're operating at the top of this scale in zone four, you're confident and enthusiastic about life and your goals. You can easily solve problems relating to your survival and you have an excellent chance of a long and happy life. If you're in zone three, you experience general happiness and well-being, but your attitude towards life is cautious and conservative. In the middle of zone two, you're in boredom. You've lost confidence and direction in life, but you're not defeated. You're just sort of idling in one spot. That's boredom. Slightly lower than that, you become resentful and antagonistic toward people and things that stand in the way of your goals. You have a mediocre chance for success, and it's a bearable existence. When you drop down into zone one, you're angry about everything. You're fighting against threatened losses, so you act impulsively and destructively, and you rarely tell the truth. This zone includes violent efforts to survive. Further down from that, you're in fear. When you think you're about to experience a loss of some kind, you become afraid. When you drop down to the middle of zone zero, you're in grief. This is the emotion you experience when you've suffered a loss. And when you're at the bottom of zone zero, you're nearly dead. And emotionally, you're in apathy. You've lost so much in life and have been defeated so often that you're no longer struggling toward your goals or even trying to survive. You've given up. Of course, you know that your emotions can go up and down all day. Good news, successes, and pleasures can raise your emotions toward happiness. Bad news, failures, losses, and pain can bring your emotions down. You've seen this in life. Take, for instance, a child who's trying to get something he thinks is very important to his survival, like a candy bar. At first, he comes to mom, happy and cheerful, asking for a candy bar. Hey, mom. Hi, honey. Can I have a candy bar? No, honey. I'm just going to be ready soon. When she refuses to give him one, he's not quite so happy anymore. He explains why he wants it. But I'm hungry now. If he still fails to get it, he'll get antagonistic about it. <clears throat> oh, don't do that. If that fails, he'll get angry. If mom still says no, he might lie about why he wants it. Well, actually, it's not for me, it's for my friend. Your friend already left. If that doesn't work, he'll start to cry. He's now in grief. Yeah, honey, now stop whining. And if mom still won't give it to him, he sinks into apathy. Fine, I didn't really want it anyway. He has given up. This child went down the tone scale because something he thought would assist his survival was denied him. The same thing will happen if something threatens his survival. For example, when this child is approached by danger, he'll drop down the tone scale from cheerful to fear to grief the more he feels threatened. 
These threats to your survival are called suppressors because they thrust against your urge to survive. In their efforts to survive, they threaten or suppress your chances of surviving. Here's an example. If you were in the business of pushing around concrete, even its weight would be a sort of suppressor because it makes it harder to perform your job. And then there's your boss's bad temper. He can become a suppressor. And on top of that, there's the heat of the day. That too can be a suppressor if it makes it difficult to do your job. These suppressors thrust down, threatening your survival in some way, and you have to thrust back with persistence and solutions. The stronger your thrust, the better you overcome them. For example, the fourth zone is the area of high response to problems, so you'd find it far easier to overcome those suppressors. Then in zone zero, where the suppressors would seem to be too great to overcome. Now, all of these exterior forces thrusting against you could make you think it's you against the world and that you're surviving only for you. But consider this. While the tree that drops a branch on your car could definitely be considered a suppressor, trees supplied the wood for the home that keeps you warm and dry. And the trees provide shade from that hot sun. And a home for squirrels, who happen to bury nuts that grow into trees. And man plants trees, so trees depend on man, just as man depends on trees. So you see, life is clearly a group effort. The dynamics of others combine with yours to overcome life suppressors. None survive alone. So you're obviously not surviving just for yourself. And you can't survive just for procreation or for the sake of your business or only for the good of mankind. You need a balance of all of these factors. So your purpose to survive can be subdivided into four purposes. In Dianetics, these four thrusts are called the four dynamics, and they encompass all of your purposes and activities. The first dynamic is your urge to reach the highest potential of survival in terms of yourself. The second dynamic is your urge to reach the highest potential of survival in terms of sex and the creation and rearing of children. The third dynamic is your urge to reach the highest potential of survival in terms of a group. And the fourth dynamic is your urge to reach the highest potential of survival for all mankind. None of these dynamics is more important than the others, but they are an expansion. As you rise up the tone scale in life, you naturally expand your sphere of interests and actions into the other dynamics. So these dynamics actually sweep out from self to family, to groups, to encompass all of mankind. Any problem or situation you encounter will be found within these dynamics. The purpose of your mind is to resolve problems relating to your survival along all four of your dynamics. Obviously, the more right those decisions are, the better you'll survive. So what constitutes a right decision? Well, something that's right or good is something that aids the survival of you, your family, your groups, or mankind. And things that are wrong or evil are the things that harm or inhibit the survival of you, your family, your groups, or mankind. So the optimum solution to any problem would be the one that does the greatest good for the greatest number of your dynamics. For example, buying a new car when you're living in a cramped apartment with a baby on the way is a decision that only benefits a little bit of your first dynamic and ignores the rest. But if you put the money toward a new home for your growing family, you're not only improving your first dynamic living quarters, but you're enhancing the survival of your second dynamic as well. So that's the better decision. Yet, as you know, not all solutions appear to be this simple. There's a natural struggle between the dynamics. You might think you're doing the right thing by spending the majority of your time at work, 
Perfect, that works. Now we need a Melanie. But you may actually be sacrificing your other dynamics for the good of your third dynamic group. Great job, everybody. Great job. While that's great for your business, it's not a solution that enhances the greatest number of your dynamics. And if one dynamic is suppressed or injured, the rest will suffer as well, because they're all connected. You see, your position on this graph is determined by the average position of all four of your dynamics. If you're doing pretty well in two of them, and not doing well in two of them, your position on the graph would be the result of the average between them. Now, if your mind were working perfectly, you'd be able to compute right from wrong, good from bad, and find the optimum solutions necessary to survive at a very high level across all of your dynamics, and your survival potential would obviously be very high. But to be honest, you have engrams, and engrams get re-stimulated. I think I'm coming down with something. And when an engram is re-stimulated, the force of your reactive mind is very strong. You drop down the tone scale and think and behave irrationally. So engrams are suppressors to your survival. They suppress your intelligence by feeding irrational information into your analytical mind. And they suppress your dynamic thrust by trapping your life force and lowering your emotional tone. <laughs> and incidentally, the lower your emotional tone drops, the lower your physical tone drops as well. Now, there's one more interesting thing about this graph. A line can be drawn which predicts how long you could live. The better you can overcome the suppressors in your life, the better your chance of surviving. So if your combined dynamic thrust is up here, you'll potentially live longer than someone whose combined dynamic thrust is down here. The whole intent of auditing is to raise you up to the higher zones of this scale. By eliminating the negative effects engrams have over you, Dianetics removes the blocks from your dynamics and increases your ability to think clearly and rationally. In other words, the more engrams you erase, the higher you'll rise on this scale and the better your chances of living longer and happier. Which is, after all, your primary goal, right? The survival graph you've just seen in this film is discussed in detail in the chapter entitled The Goal of Man in Dianetics. You can read about your dynamics and the optimum solution to any problem in the chapter entitled The Four Dynamics. And to learn much more about the emotional tone scale, read Emotion and the Dynamics 